We're going to start our app by building the basic UI structure, which will be two labels telling the user what to do, then three image buttons showing three world flags. First, find the assets for this project and drag them into your asset catalog. That means opening assets.xe assets in Xcode, then dragging in the flag images from the Project 2 files folder. You'll notice that the images are named after their country, along with either at 2x or at 3x. These are images at double resolution and triple resolution to handle different types of iPhone screen. Next, we need two properties to store our game data. An array of all the country images we want to show in the game, plus an integer storing which country image is correct. Var countries equals an array of Estonia, France, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Nigeria, Poland, Russia, Spain, UK, US. Var correct answer equals int.random in 0 through 2. The int.randomIn method automatically picks a random number, which is perfect here. We'll be using that to decide which country flag should be tapped. Inside our body, we need to lay out our game prompt in a vertical stack, so let's start with that. vStack, text, tap the flag of, text, countries, correct answer. Below there, we want to have our tappable flag buttons, and while we could just add them to the same vStack, we can actually create a second vStack, so we have more control over the spacing. The vStack we just created above holds two text views and has no spacing. But the flags are going to have 30 points of spacing between them, so it looks better. So, start by adding this for each loop directly below the end of the vStack we just created. For each, 0, up to 3, number in, button, action, I'll do comment, flag was tapped, then image self dot countries number dot rendering mode dot original. The rendering mode original modifier tells SwiftUI to render the original image pixels rather than try to recolor them as a button. And now we have a problem. Our body property is trying to send back two views, a vStack and a for each. But that isn't allowed. This is where our second vStack will come in. I'd like you to wrap the original vStack and the for each below in a new vStack, this time with a spacing of 30 points. vStack, spacing 30, then indent the inner vStack and the for each, and add an ending brace. Having two vertical stacks like this allows us to position things more precisely. The outer stack will space its views out by 30 points each, whereas the inner stack has no spacing. That's enough to give you a basic idea of our user interface, and already you'll see it doesn't look great. Some flags have white in them, which blends into the background, and all the flags are centered vertically on the screen. We'll come back to polish the UI more later, but for now, let's put in a blue background color to make the flags easier to see. Because this means putting something behind our outer V stack, we need to use a Z stack as well. Yes, we'll have a V stack, inside another vStack, inside a zStack, and that's perfectly normal. Start by putting a zStack around your outer vStack, like this. I'll put a zStack here, indent the other views, and end with a closing brace. Now put this just inside the zStack, so it goes behind the outer vStack. Color, dot blue, dot edges ignoring safe area, dot all. That edges ignoring safe area modifier ensures the color goes right to the edge of the screen. Now that we have a darker background color, we should get the text looking brighter so it stands out better. I'll add foreground color dot white after the first label and the second. The last change we'll make, for now at least, is to push upwards all the things in our outer V stack so the UI sits next to the top of the screen. This is as simple as adding a spacer view directly after the end of the for each.